Hey, guys, have you lost your drive, you lost your passion, you lost your excitement for life? Hey, today we're going to be talking about bringing the wine back. So you don't want to miss this. Make sure you stay tuned. Hey, everybody, welcome to the Kingsman Podcast. So glad you joined us again. This is Pastor Remo. We're here at Resurrection Life with our Kingsman, which is a, is a men's ministry here uh, at the church. And we're excited to bring this podcast to you today. If these podcasts have helped you, Annie, make sure you go ahead and comment or make sure you like, subscribe. Uh, we want to make sure we get this content out to whoever we can. So we're excited to have you today. Super excited about the word that God has put on our heart. It's already blessed us. We're hoping it'll bless you. So look, if you're like me, I know we get to our life and sometimes, man, we just wake up and wonder, what in the world am I doing? And we lose our drive, we lose our passion. Uh, sometimes the wine runs out. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. I was watching a documentary just this past weekend with my son. He's been wanting to watch it with me because I used to tell him about this running back. You know, he loves football. I tell him about this running back. I said, man, you ain't seen a running back like this, blah, blah, blah. And he always would think, nah, that's them old running backs. They're not as good as today's running backs. Well, the documentary came out called Bye Bye Barry. And it's a documentary on Barry Sanders. And uh, we were watching it, man. He was actually, he was actually really amazed at Barry Sanders. So we got to watch that. And, uh, you know, he was asking, he was like, Dad, I know that was the whole point of the documentary, but I still don't understand why he stopped playing. He was so good, he left at his peak. And he mentioned in there how he kind of just lost his drive. He, he just knew inside he lost his passion, he lost his motivation, he lost his drive. And maybe it was all the years he was beat up so much and never tasted victory or whatever it might be. But he kind of left at a point where he was still on top. And so that's kind of hard. That's the hard pill for everyone to swallow I think sometimes in our life as Christians, you know, the mark of a Christian should be joy. It should be excitement. It should be a life, right? That's the mark of a Christian. I mean, if you think about it in our life, the mark of a Christian isn't the fact that we go to church on Sunday. The mark of a Christian isn't the fact that I got baptized or, or that I'm a preacher or whatever we might want to mark it. The mark of a Christian is what was dead on Friday got up on Sunday and what was death has been brought to life. And that's what God wants to do with all of our lives. That's what resurrection is all about. That's who he is. And so if we're a Christian, we should be marked by joy. We should be marked by enthusiasm. We should be marked by life itself. And uh, so I think, though, what happens in our life is going to happen to every single one of us, whether we are Christian or not. And that is that sometimes the wine runs out. And just like it did with Barry Sanders, it'll happen to us as Christians. It'll happen to us who are preachers and pastors. The wine runs out. And so I want to talk to you today about how to bring the wine back. And uh, man, that, that's exciting to me because as God was speaking to my heart, it just already has excited me, if you can't tell already, and I'm excited to share it with you. So let's look at what the Bible reports to us today. The Bible reports to us that there was a time that they was at a party and they was partying with Jesus and they was drinking wine. And they was having a good time, and they was celebrating at a wedding. This is the first miracle Jesus is going to do. Man, that's amazing. The first miracle he's going to do, there they are at a party, and they're excited. Everybody's excited. But in the middle of the story, the wine runs out. That tells me that even when Jesus is right there in the center of the home, even when you're a Christian, even when you got everything that you know you've been blessed by God, that the wine can still run out. But I want to I read what it says here. So we can get a good picture of what it is. Let's read this text in John chapter 2. It says that on the third day, boy, some things that happened great on the third day. A wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples also had been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, it had run out. Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. And so she's asking Jesus, you got to do something about it. She says, he, he says to her, woman, why do you involve me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, hey, do whatever he tells you to do. <laughs> Nearby stood six stone water jars. They, they, used, they were used for the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to his disciples, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out, take it to the master for the banquet. And they did. And the master of the banquet tasted the water and it had been turned into wine. Boy, that excites me right there. So no matter what, hey, if it's turned that wine, that something that was good, something that was fortifying, something that was 
exuberant, something that's exciting. That's what wine speaks of. It speaks of volume. It speaks of richness. It speaks of joy. It speaks of life. That that very thing, maybe that thing that's good in your life, maybe that thing that God blessed you with in your life, that there's a time where it runs out. And right here in the scripture, we see where the wine had run out. So I want to just point out a few things to you to, so that you can bring the wine back. Because you see, if, you have, if you're a Christian, you have Jesus, and you can take that same thing that's run out and put it in his hands, and he can turn the water into wine. And so I want you all to understand that sooner or later, man, no matter what you do in your life, no matter how good of a man you are, how good of a Christian you are, how much you follow Jesus, sooner or later, even something that is good, the wine will run out. And the question is, what do we do when the wine runs out? And no matter how much we love, no matter how much we go to church, no matter how much we get in the word, sooner or later, the wine will run out. That which is rich and tasteful and good, it seems to have gone bland. It seems to have lost its taste. You seem to have lost its fervor and it's an excitement. So we ask God, where in the world did the wine go? God, where did this go? Where did my marriage go? Where, where did my love for each other go? Where did my love in this relationship go? Where did the richness go? Where did my resources go? Where did my strength go? God, where in the world did it go? This is the great question, but I believe God wants to get us all in that place, man, because when he gets us in that place, you see humanity's, humanity's extremity is, God, is God's opportunity. Where we get to the end of our rope is where God can start to pour in our life. See, God wants us where we was once strong to become weak so that we realize that he is really our strength. Sometimes where God has brought us so high is the very place he will make us low because he wants us to realize he is the one who sits on high. And so this is an opportunity more than it is uh, an extremity. This is, this is something that God can move in our life and show us who he is rather than us just showing what we can do. He will show what he can do. So we say, where did the resources go? I, I don't like when the wine runs out. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I don't like when the wine runs out in my life. I don't like when when all the things that I love seem to have gone distasteful and bland and what in the world am I even doing? Why am I even waking up and doing this anymore? My job's not like it used to be. The ministry's not like it used to be. My relationships aren't what they were. God, where in the world? I don't like when the wine runs out. It's not as sweet as it once was. It's not as exciting as it once was. So the question is, what, what do we do when we get to that place? Well, we got to do what the disciples did, what Mary did. She saw by faith and she went to Jesus because she didn't, she didn't sit there and complain about the fact that the wine went out. She just knew that, Jesus, this is an opportunity for you to move in my life. And by faith, she saw that the very water that they had could be turned into wine. You see, the scripture said that when he took the wine, when he, he told his disciples to take water and take water and fill it up to the brim. Not wine, but water. And he said, just fill up the stones to the brim. In fact, when they carried it to the master to taste, it was still water. So here's what I want you to get out of this, what God showed me. Do you know, do you know that for every, apparently from what I've studied, that every glass of wine, every bottle of wine you buy is at least, at least 60% water. Every bottle of wine is at least 60% water. You say, what in the world, what, what does that mean? Well, this is what it means to me. If we know that every bottle of wine has at least 60% water, then we can logically conclude that for every glass of water, there's a potential for wine. <laughs> Boy, that gets me excited if it didn't get you excited. Think of that, that right now, the water that seems to be just water, it's not wine anymore. That there's an opportunity for it to become wine. The very thing that all the joys run out of, there's still the opportunity for it to be joy. See, that's what he wants you to realize because that's what he can do. You see, so, so this is what I want you to realize. It's not about what you see it as right now. It's about what it can become. It may not be what you want, but God's not done with it yet. That's what you have to understand. The job you have may not be what you wanted. It might not be what you thought it was going to be, but God's not finished with it yet. Your marriage might not be what you thought you signed up for, but God's not finished with it yet. We, we got to take our time to realize that God has done this before in our life. If you are a Christian, 
Has God not turned the water into wine in your life? Has God not ever taken a trial and turned it into a testimony? Come on, I need somebody to help me. Has God not ever brought you through a fire just to turn you and make you pure gold? Has God not ever let you go through a valley just so that he can take you up to the mountaintop? Has God not ever done something that was a mess and used it to make a miracle? I'm talking to somebody. Let's take 10 seconds just to go ahead and praise him for taking the water in your life and turning into wine. I got to praise him anyway. Thank you, Jesus. He's done it in my life. Because you see, if we forget that, we forget that that thing that we're complaining about and the thing that we seem to lose desire for and that thing that seemed, we seem to lost our passion and we want to give up on is the very thing that God's trying to pull the wine back in. You see, because it might just be water. It might be bitter water. But God says, I'll turn it sweet again. See, it's amazing, but you got to have expectation. This is what I'm talking about, guys. This is what God showed me. You got to have expectation as a Christian. We, we don't expect God to move like that anymore. Look, Mary, Mary expected it. She, she had enough faith not to walk by sight, but by faith. By faith means that she had an expectation. She had a vision. She did not see it as water. She already saw it as wine. She saw the water in Jesus' hands becoming what becoming wine what is it in your life that has run so cold and so bland and has lost its taste that you wake up and you literally thinking to yourself i'm just done with this whatever that thing is in your life it might be the very thing that god wants to use to bring you to your destiny he's just waiting for you to put it in his hands he's just waiting for you to co-expecting have a vision Start calling out that thing in your life and start calling it not for what it is, but what for it what can become. Man, this speaks to me because, you know, as men, maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's your marriage, maybe it's your wife. You want to know the Bible says that, that a woman was formed from a man. And the word there, woman, it literally in the Greek means becoming. It means what it will become. Because a man, is, as we sanctify our wives, is, is that our goal, our, our responsibility is not to look at her for what she is, but to see her for what she can become. And it is our job as a man to stand in the front and lead that we can sanctify her. We can start to help her become what she is to become. And, and the genius of every man is that God developed us and made us out of the mud. And the genius of a man is that we can break out of the mud and get out of what God, what, what God intended for our life, that we would not come just be mud, but we would be in his image and likeness and we become and step into manhood. This is the genius of God's creation, that we're constantly becoming, that we're not just what we are now, but we will become. It's not about the water. You see, the water can be turned into wine. So I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I think we need to start seeing things the way God sees things. Thank God God didn't see me as I saw myself when I was 23 years old and I had an encounter with Jesus on the cross because I would have condemned my own self. But thank God he didn't see me for who I was then. He saw me for what I was going to become. Just like Gideon was hiding, little man hiding in the wine press. But God come to him and said, you mighty man of valor. He didn't call him for what he was in chapter one of Judges. He called him for what he was going to be in chapter seven because God's not finished with you yet. Just like he came to Paul and Paul was the persecutor, but he didn't see him as Paul. He saw him as Saul the preacher. He didn't see Simon as Simon the coward. He saw him as Peter the courageous on the day of Pentecost because God's not finished with you yet. He doesn't see it just as water. He sees it as water that he can turn to wine. I don't know who I'm trying to speak to today, but God's trying to help somebody. Don't you give up. Don't you walk out on what God's got for your life. You don't have to say bye-bye like Barry Sanders did. You don't have to give up on the thing you love that much because it's become so hard and depressing and lost its taste. God has something great for it. You got to just get it in his hands and trust in the Lord and wait and watch what God can do with just a little rag and a rock and just a little shepherd boy. Giants will fall. His kingdom will be established. God will pour out his richness. The party will be started again. Everyone will celebrate when you put it to your lips, what God's put in his hands. It will taste and you will see that God is good. In order for that to happen, man, we have to go expecting we can't give up on it. That's why she said, just do what he tells you to do. <laughs> I know it don't look like it's going to work, but just do it anyway. 
Just have enough faith to say, God, I don't make sense to me, but this is what you said. This is what I'm going to do. God, you told me to go into this job, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it the best I can. God, you told me to go here for my ministry, so this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do the best I can. And if you just do what he says and you go expecting, then maybe you'll bring that excitement and that joy back. Sometimes we get so caught up in what we don't have, we lose sight of what things can become. We almost become resentful of what is in our hands. We almost become resentful of the water. But the water is the very thing God will use to bring the wine. And if you want to see that today, man, if you want to see it in your life, I know I want to see it in mine. I want to see it with my children, my marriage. I want to see it in my relationships. I want to see it. I want to see it play out in the ministry. I want to see it play out in my workplace. If, I, if that's going to play out, I have to have an expectation. I have to have a vision. I have to see it the way God sees. We have to walk by faith and not walk by sight. So here's step one. Step one is to get ready for step two. <laughs> Just prepare. Just go expecting. See it the way God sees it. Let's stop complaining about it. We can get excited about the fact that God's going to do something with this water and he's going to turn it into wine. Well, I hope that helped you today, man. Listen, let's go expecting. God has great plans for you, plans to prosper you and give you an expected end. And if God's word says he will finish what he started, then we can hold him at his word. You can hang in there, and I promise you there's a third day coming in your life. Just hold on and let's do what God's asked us to do, and let's see the promised land that he has for our life. God is going to bring the wine back. Listen, God bless you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this today. Make sure you comment, let us know. Subscribe, hit like button. Let's get this word out. May it help all you men everywhere, God. Let's be the men that God has created us to be. Stand strong in the faith. Act like men. God bless you. Have a great week.